Hi everyone, Wismeril here. Today I want to show you the first endgame build that I've been assembling for the Sorcerer class for Season 3 of Diablo 4. And this build is no other than the quadruple blue flame burn based on the new meteor setup enabled by this new unique helm that's been available since the start of Season 3. This build is a delight to play. It is very satisfying to play and because of the visuals, you see like everything is blowing and the entire screen is burning with all those blue flames here and there. And it's just like, I've, I've, ha I've been having a blast playing that for the last two weeks. And I want to show you the um, like end game, uh, best end game version. I've been testing many different ways to, uh, to play the build, many different items, skills. And I just want to give you a feedback on the best possible way, in my opinion, you can play a burn build based on Meteor. I will start by saying that there are several ways to play Meteors, okay, Meteor. The first three ways are, um, the first one is a pure Meteor build based on the critical strike damage of Meteor. That's the first way you can play it. The second way to play it is still to remain in the critical strike damage side of Meteor and to play it alongside Fireball. That's the second way that is very popular to play. And the last version that I'm playing now is the burn version because Meteor is doing upfront flag damage and burn damage afterwards for three seconds, right? So the pure burn version will, would be playing Meteor alongside um, Flame Shield, alongside uh, Firewall and alongside Incinerate. And yes, I'm not trolling you. I know that um, Incinerate is considered to be a very weak and lame skill. For some part, I agree. If you stand still for 20 seconds and just do your damage this way, it is very lame indeed. But with a more active playstyle, like the one that you can see uh, in the video footage, where you're just uh, throwing, like, torching um, enemies here and there with um, Incinerate for just a few seconds, like one to three seconds maximum, and then you're uh, moving on with your life, just casting other skills and stuff, then that's the way I enjoy playing it, and it's not lame um, this way. Um, incinerate is there to fill the gap because like sometimes you will have like one to two seconds where you cannot cast any meteor and then you're very happy to touch the screen at that moment. But then once meteor becomes available again, prioritize meteor and only use incinerate when you have nothing else to do. That is in my opinion the best way to play incinerate. Okay, now what's happening on screen? you only have access to two skills, um, two damaging, well, three technically, damaging skills you want to play, right? You'll be throwing meteors on cooldown and um, it has a 100% lucky hit chance with this build. That's why I consider this build to be end game because you really need to have a lot of lucky hit um, bonus on your build in order to enable uh, the flow of this build. So uh, once you're doing that, let me switch to the game to just show you quickly. So we'll, we're playing with two enchantments, Meteor and Firewall. This um, defines the burn version of um, Meteor because you want things to proc of Meteor and you want Firewall Meteor to proc every time you're hitting enemies like this. I'm not doing anything, it will auto-proc firewalls, it will auto-proc meteors, and this, this is just going on by itself. So that's the burst version, in my opinion, because you don't have to do anything, and then you can touch the screen using incinerate, because everything is going on. So you'll just manually throw a few meteors here and there, but then everything will just blow up by themselves, and you're free to cast incinerate on the remaining enemies. So we have three of the four blue flame sh um, um, skills, right? We have incinerate, you can see that it has this blue flame uh, after the wand. Uh, we have meteor because it's, see, there's this blue flame when it falls and when it burns. 
and the flame uh, firewall also have this nice blue color. And the last one is um, flame shield. There you can see the blue color. And my new flame shield in this build is a damaging skill, not to be underestimated. You, you deal four sources, four main sources of damage, and those are those four skills, right? Uh, your rotation is typically, there are two ways to play it, but you want to play it with Rainment of the Infinite so that you uh, jump in the middle of the fray, group them, so that the X file corroded signet will do most of it, will do a lot of AoE damage because enemies are clumped together. And then once you are uh, into the fray, you have to um, cast ice plates to like reduce the cooldown of meteor by a significant amount, and when you're here, um, cast flame shield because you'll be burning enemies around. And once nothing is available, just touch the screen with incinerate. That's basically how you want to play this build. So I have to highlight a few things here. You need a lot, and when I mean a lot, I mean a hell lot of Lucky Hit Chance bonus, the regular one and the one with a buyer, right? I have included it every, from every source you can get on the build. Like if we equip the Soul Brain instead of Raiment of the Infinite, you cannot have more Lucky Hit Chance than this, where you could pop the uh, Combat Fortune Elixir for an additive 20%, but then let's look at the total, that's 90 plus 40, that's 130, and you can go up to more than 150. Now, why would you want to do that? You want to have the highest lucky hit proc chance on Meteor, and when I pop a shield, this goes up to 99%, so let's round it up to 100%. Every time um, Meteor deals uh, flat damage and every time um, Meteor deals burn damage for those three seconds after the impact, there is a 100% chance for lucky hit procs to happen. And those are, well, more Meteors falling, 10% chance, or some 30% um, uh, chance to spawn three, uh, sorry, two firewalls underneath. So that's the first reason why we want as much lucky hit chance as we can, because Meteor will be 100%. Um, flame Shield will be quite high, also with 87%. 87 um, Firewall will also have a very decent uh, proc rate with 74%. And last but not least, uh, Incinerate will have a decent one also with 21%. That's not the highest uh, lucky hit chance proc rate, but hey, we, we, we need this skill to add a little bit more damage, right? So this, my friends, is how the build runs smoothly. Like you need a lucky hit chance is like we are making hard choices by including as much as we can in the build, but it's a necessary evil for the build to function. You want to have close to 100% lucky hit chance on Meteor, and you want to have in your uh, Paragon board um, Enchantment Master so that you have 10% uh, chance for additional Meteors and 30% chance for additional Firewalls. And you do need that, um, I can't um, stress it enough, for the build to function. If you don't have that, you'll just see a few firewalls here and there, and you'll just see a few meteors here and there. And truly, this build is meant to be play with, played with like tons of meteors and tons of firewalls proking around. That's the true essence, the quintessence of this build is the automatic cast base of your two enchantments. So now that I've <laughs> stressed this uh, thing along, so we do run like with this build, which is rocking the soul brain. I recommend rocking the soul brain if you're gearing up because it will give you additional 20% damage reduction plus a damage reduction affix and a life affix onto it uh, first. And it will also give you a lucky hit chance affix that you can't find on the raiment of the infinite. So while you're gearing up, I recommend playing with Soul Brain. And once you have enough damage reduction here and there, 
and uh, you want to do more, da more damage, equip Raymond of the Infinite. Otherwise, we are looking at, of course, Starfall Coronet because of the uh, legendary effect that is, is having Meteor Fire a lot more Meteors. Uh, it has lucky hit chance up to 25%, which is really nice, alongside very nice affixes. Uh, you want to be rocking the Shattered Star, um, Shattered Star's uh, legendary power for more meteors, automatic and manuals. Um, you want to be, I'll, I'll include a build planner where you can see exactly the roles you want to have. Uh, you want the Juggernaut, and we're solving the uh, armor um, cap by just having the Juggernaut and 925, around like more than 900 internal level items, plus 1% total armor roll. And this will make our armor to be more than 13,200, which is exactly what you want to have to cap out your armor versus uh, monsters that are level 154, which is currently the highest level you can face in the game right now without the gauntlet without any additional content 13200 is the magic number you want more of that to have 85 percent damage reduction on physical damage bleed or flat physical damage and we're solving this by just having the juggernaut legendary power one percent total armor roll and more than 900 internal level from boots to helm that's how it's going on top of that we have a few damage reduction rolls here you want to have more than 10 ranks on firewall um, on meteor see 10 11 you could have a little bit more and on flame shield and on incinerate for this blue flame sweet effect it's not only visual it also means it deals a lot of damage so that's why we have it there uh, you want to be rocking the fortune legendary for more lucky hit chance and those rolls over there we're playing with the flame scar so um let's be honest this item this item is very weak it's very lame uh, for like, the most recent time, I just hated it. I find it um, like not good because this legendary power where it shoots like little things, they deal no damage. They are just here to proc some uh, lucky hits or some, sorry, some critical strike uh, hits because those uh, flat damage um, numbers that are flying there, they can critically strike. So my understanding of this weak item is that this legendary power is just there to trigger some critical strike if you do need them. But we are not needing them. But we do need the lucky hit um, affix on this item. We like the mana cost reduction, the ranks to incinerate for the blue flame. So everything but the legendary power on this item is great. But guess what? We don't need an additional... Um, legendary power we do we deal enough damage like the you can see here on a tier 100 um what is it called again volt we deal way enough damage to clear the the um the volts in decent timing right so damage is not an issue we can afford to have this strange unique wand equipped right um what else do we have? So on the amulet, you want to have a lucky hit chance. Basically, we're getting lucky hit chance everywhere we can, and it really matters. You really need that. We have cooldown reduction everywhere on helm, amulet, rings, where it's not accessible except for those two unique items, and uh, focus, both as a prefix and affix, so we can cap out on uh, cooldown reduction. We want ranks to defensive skills for this blue flame effect on flame shield and for very low cooldown on teleport because once we run Rainman of the Infinite, which is the best version of this build, we're going to have a very low cooldown. That's 5 seconds minus 3 seconds when we group enemies, so that's 2.70 seconds, 17 seconds, I'm sorry, um, uptime uh, up for the teleport. We are running, of course, the Tal Rasha. It's best in slot in many, many builds, and this one is no exception. We really like that it has a lucky hit chance and cooldown reduction as um, affixes. Uh, where the X Fall is doing a lot of damage for this build. Every source of burn has uh, half, like um, when it uh, lucky hits, 
there's half a chance for it to trigger this uh, up to 41,000 damage. It deals a lot of damage. And we have many, many sources of uh, burn damage. We have four, maybe, I'm not sure how the Shattered Stars is counted, the burn, that is. But I think we have between four to six different sources of burn that can trigger this uh, x fall and that's doing a lot of damage. Most of your AOE damage is coming from there. You see, like, it's nearly a million uh, dot damage. That's, that's a lot, obviously. Um, so this one, you definitely need it. And it's a very sweet uh, item for the affixes, lucky hit chance and cooldown reduction. And here we are going to have a generic um, damage multiplier. I think the best one is Stompswell. I should not be running this one. But those, this one is not the best uh, focus I have. Instead of the critical strike chance against injured enemies, here I need to have damage reduction versus burning enemies. That's why I did not imprint the right one. But otherwise you want the uh, lucky hit chance and lucky hit chance while you have a barrier alongside cooldown reduction. So that's for the items. Let's have a look at the uh, Seneschal Construct, the uh, new power in Season 3. You want to be running the meta call of a flash of adrenaline alongside tactical support and duration support for a 20% damage multiplier with 100% uptime. You want to have it alongside safeguard support for 15% damage reduction. Since uh, we'll likely be running the Raiment of the Infinite, we are a little bit light on the damage reduction side. So having this alongside a few rolls like two on the um, pants, I recommend having damage reduction from distant, damage reduction from burning, and also on the offhand having damage reduction from burning, alongside the ever-living power on the amulet for 38% damage reduction against vulnerable enemies. And this combination, um, alongside we do have also damage reduction from burning in the Paragon board over there with Keeper of Flames, and smoldering embers. And this combination makes us basically not die during tier 100 uh, nightmare dungeons and vaults. I can't stress out that not dying in Diablo is very strong. You know, if you just like, if there's no risk of you dying when you are doing the highest content available, it's a nice gaming experience, right? You're not dying, you're just going quickly, especially that the checkpoint system in dungeons and vaults is, is very lame, it's very poor. You respawn sometimes at the entrance of the dungeon when you completed 80% of the dungeon, that sucks. Dying sucks. So yeah, you can call me conservative because all my builds are very tanky, but hey, that's the way I enjoy playing the game and that's the way I recommend you play the game. So uh, that's for the first half of the construct. And the second half, let's have a closer look. So we are rocking Lightning Bolt. I really like Lightning Bolt over, what's the name of the other one? Tempest or Firefly or whatever. This one is super nice in order to proc the vulnerable on enemies. The sorcerer historically uh, has difficulties to permanently make enemies vulnerable and this solves this issue for uh, season three, just like it was solved with a vampiric power in season two. This power is very strong. How do we make the most out of this power? By playing lightning bolts alongside arcing support and multi-shot support. The Seneschal will be when it's around, because sometimes it's behind you, but hey, that's the AI, there's nothing I can do. It will shoot uh, 11, uh, sorry, it will shoot five projectiles, and every projectile can hit up to 11 targets. That's 55 targets every 1.3 seconds. Everything will be vulnerable all the time while this thing is around you. And why is it important? Because we do have damage reduction from vulnerable. It helps a lot on the survivability front. And we have uh, damage multipliers that uh, rely on having the enemies vulnerable. And vulnerable in itself is a 1.2 damage multiplier. So this, in my opinion, is the best non-herber version of that build in terms of items and in terms of um, Seneschal Construct. This is what I recommend you play alongside um, this build. 
it is very very efficient you can consider popping a, com a combatant fortune uh, elixir if you do have a lot of them it's up to you let's have a look at the paragon board so for the, per for the paragon board um, this is the best in my opinion paragon setup for this build what did i achieve with this setup first i grabbed nearly all maximum life nodes because once again not dying is great right so alongside capping out our armor and alongside of course capping out our resistances we do want a large uh, life pool which is around uh, 17,000 and go up to 18,000 i believe if you have like uh, max rolls on life here on the helm and here on the soul brain you will be beyond 20,000 life which is very comfortable remember your shields are based of your max life so that's why it's important in my opinion to have a large health pool and this setup this paragon setup does it very well the second thing we need is uh, the lucky hit uh, chance from those three nodes advantage that's an additional 10 percent the next build defining node will be enchantment master and the other one that is very nice to have and that I have included in this setup is Elemental Summoner for an additional 10% damage reduction on um, Ice Blades and Ice Blade translates into more damage reduction once it hits vulnerable enemies. Enemies are per permanently vulnerable, right? So we are capping out on cooldown reduction. We are capping out on cooldown reduction for Ice Blades. And the only way we could have more cooldown reduction is by having Ice Blades is in an enchantment, but we can't do that in this setup. Otherwise, that's the closest uh, build to uh, capping out um, cooldown reduction that you can have and the paragon setup uh, backs, backs up this, um, this thing, this scenario. Once we have accessed, access to that, the next thing we want to do, of course, we cap out our resistance in the paragon board. We do want to grab the meaningful damage multiplier, burning instinct and uh, frigid fates. And we do want next to grab mm, damage uh, reduction and damage multiplier where we can get them. And this is what this setup is achieving. It's not a glass cannon uh, full damage setup. It's a smart setup that backs up the scenario of this build, having as much, uh, as much sorry, uh, triggers of our enchantments uh, being undying, basically, and having the build run smoothly in terms of clear speed of the highest content available in the game at the moment. Uh, while we are on the subject of the damage and the highest content available on the subject, let me uh, state that this build is great for outer world content, vault, but it is not the best for nightmare dungeon and solo and bosses. This is because uh, the, while the AOE is great, the single target damage is not the best. Let me show you um, a fight versus a level one, uh, 154, a tier 100 boss, in this case the Blood Bishop, level 154, and while the clear is decent, slash good enough, it's okay, you can see that the health bar is it's like uh, the, the boss is melting, it's gonna die. It's not the fastest build um, on the market to kill uh, bosses. The single target is not that great. It's doing the job. It's not like you can't play this build because single damage, single damage is not enough. It's just that um, Arclash and Blizzard will outclass this build by a country mile. But knowing this, well, in this season, you don't really need to do uh, Nightmare Dungeons. You can just do Vaults and Outer World content. And when you will be doing uh, Uber Bosses, most likely you will be in a team of four, grouped up with uh, at least one Barbarian, which is going to one-shot the boss. So you should be perfectly fine. If you want a better build, stay tuned to the channel, because the next build I'm going to assemble is going to be the Blizzard build. 
So you can see it works. It is functional, it's just not the best option out there. Let's round up the build guide with the skill tree. So what's important in the skill tree, like I mentioned, is to have more than 10 points on each of your damaging skills. We'll be getting uh, the multipliers that matter uh, here and there. And basically that's about it. You want to grab lucky hit chance, more cooldown reduction with ice blades and protection. And that's about it. That's everything you need in a nutshell to uh, play this build. Um, so this is Wismaril signing off. I really hope that you enjoy playing this build just like I did to get those Tal Rasha Meteor um, vibes from Diablo 3, which uh, I, that's the reason why I wanted to play that build first uh, when season launched. And then I'm going to transition to the top builds in preparation for the gauntlets. That's going to launch, I think, uh, next Tuesday, not this Tuesday, but the coming Tuesday after that and I'll be sharing those builds on the channel. I truly hope you have a blast, <laughs> pun intended, and I'll see you guys in the next video.